It's talking more on the non-technical side of pen testing, uh, specifically on how to uh, build up a company and differentiate, differentiate yourself from somebody else or everybody else, I should say. If my clicker works, which of course not. Mine is not work, not going to work today. All right. Like I said, never trust your batteries, eh? Come on. Why does it want to go? Be smarter than the laptop. Now we got 15 clips, right? This is about me. Um, I have certifications, but nobody cares. Uh, just like putting that out there in case you're hiring. Anybody hiring? Oh, okay. Um, 16 years in InfoSec. I'm old. That's all. You know, old, fat, bold. I'm lazy, so if I mumble and, you know, I tell people I speak encrypted, so if you can't hear me or you don't understand me, let me know. I don't take any offense to it. I don't care. Uh, I beat up people for fun and profit. Uh, I teach Krav Maga, so if you don't like this talk, tough shit. Um, this is all mine, not my employers. has nothing to do with any of the employers that I work for, except for myself, which I do work for myself. So for that employer, it does work. How about you? Because it's not all about me, it's about you, right? You're not easily offended. So if I curse, you don't care, right? Don't be storming out, right? You don't mind nudity. Yeah, just making sure you guys are awake. No? You mind nudity? Yeah. You don't know what it is. You may give shit. <laughs> you may. <laughs> Hopefully you have somewhat of a technical background in pen testing, right? So you're at DerbyCon, so that's already a checkbox off, right? You understand a little bit of pen testing, right? Hopefully you're less drunk than I am. I did tell you I was old. I am drinking Diet Coke, unfortunately. I was drinking, but I don't like to drink. Had this may be recorded. I don't want to be, you know, actively drunk. Did you say nudity? Yes, I did. This is me without my shirt on, or clothes on. It is. More hair down here than I do up here. All right, so let's get started. Um, last time I gave this talk, it took about an hour and 15 minutes, and I gave it to uh, the local uh, hackerspace for a dry run. So I need to do this in 25 minutes, so I'm going to go really, 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 really fast, and if you need to know more stuff, just hit me up afterwards. I um, love talking about this stuff all the time. The first thing you need to do for being a quote-unquote pen tester is you need to have some kind of technical prowess, right? You need to be able to do these tests. I just want to mention these. Um, again, this is not a technical talk, per se. This is going to be talking about the business end behind it and some of the other things that go behind it. But, you know, I like the CEH. Not that I like the certification, but I, I like the processes that it covers, right? So if you're not familiar with the CEH or if you don't have your CEH, it doesn't matter. You're still a good pen tester. Okay. But these are the five steps it does, you know, reconnaissance, scanning, enumeration, gaining access, maintaining access, covering tracks. All great, right? These are all good things to do during a pen test. Do any of these cover how you set up your business? Do any of these cover how do you get clients? How to work with clients? No. So they address the technical aspects, but they don't, they don't go on to the non-technical stuff. So where do we go from here? We know we've got certifications. There are frameworks out there, right? I'm sure most of you have seen these. I've got a couple of samples up. The frameworks give you a little bit more. They say, if you see this, do this, right? And they're just basically a big, huge mind map of stuff, right? It's great. If I see an open SSH, I can throw these attacks to it. If I see this, I can send in these attacks to it. Here's all the common passwords for all the common things I ever see in my life, right? They're very good. They give you a lot more specifics. They're a little bit better than the CEH in that they start getting into pre-engagement stuff. They start talking about contracts, SOWs, things like this. Still not business related, but more so than your typical uh, CEH or your typical, I'll call it uh, technical vulnerability assessment certifications. All right. This is kind of what they look like. I'm going to show you mine at the end of this, so don't worry about knowing all these. But if you've never seen a mind map, this is a mind map, right? Um, this, uh, the reason I chose this for uh, excerpt is because it does talk about scoping a project, you know, some of the things that you want to do. Um, but it kind of starts off like if you've already won the work or you've already gotten a client very close to winning the work, right? I'm bidding on a project. I, this is scoping it out. But it doesn't really go over how do I get to that stage in the first place, right? where they break down, they don't, like I said before, they don't um, 
They don't talk about the formulation of the company, the formulation of what you do beforehand. They lack the business sense, the businesses, as I like to call it. All right, any questions so far? Talking too fast? Good. Thank God for caffeine. That's all I got to say. Random cuteness. Make sure you're all awake. Yes? Okay. Good. So getting into the business sense, right? If you want to do pen testing as a business and you want to make money at it, you have to treat it more so as a business than from the technical side of the house. I hate saying that it's something like DerbyCon where you're here for learning all the technical stuff and all the latest hacks and all this kind of stuff, but you have to run it as a business. You have to have sales and marketing. Nobody here talks about sales and marketing, right? Nobody tells you how to do that, right? Position papers, white papers, right? You have to get out there and start writing about a subject, whether it's something you're a pro or against or um, you want to do configurations or something, or, or something that differentiates you amongst everybody else that has a pen testing business, right? Um, reports. You're going to be doing lots of reports as a pen tester, so learn to like it. We're going to go, we got a couple of slides all just on reports, what makes a good report, a bad report, etc. Um, since you've got to write a lot of them, you might as well give out samples of what you deliver. That is your differentiator. Can somebody copy that and use that as a, their own? Sure. But if you can say that, you know, you were the first to come up with that methodology or that paperwork or uh, that report structure, then the others copying you or is just a good thing, right? They're using it, so that makes me a little bit better. Differentiation. We're going to talk about, in a couple slides, we're going to talk about this a lot. Um, how do you differentiate yourself from everybody else that's doing pen testing? You have to think about that when you create your business, right? This is long before you ever want, want any work. This is long before you sold anything, right? You have to understand the customer. What does the customer want and give them what they want? Sometimes the customer's stupid and they want something stupid. So you have to give them something stupid, right? It's the business aspects. So that now that that customer has your trust and they, they like working with you and there's a, there's a relationship there, now you can give them what they should have asked for in the first place, right? They may not have asked for that in the first time. You have to understand the businesses and, and the verticals and stuff that you're trying to work in, right? If you're working healthcare, understand healthcare. If you're working financials, understand financials. Have at least worked in a bank before. And, you know, most of us, I've been, you know, again, getting old and stuff and been drunk many a time. So I spent a lot of times in hospitals. So I have a, at least some tie into hospitals and, and the hospital verticals itself, right? We talk about understanding the customer. There are different customers out there, and they all want something different, right? We have a hostile customer. Their boss is making them go get this pen test, right? How you approach them when you go in there and you start talking to them is a different message than a naive customer, as an example, right? A naive customer, they don't really know what they're supposed to do. They just know that they have to get one because they heard their friend get one. Oh, you got a pen test? Oh, shit, I need a pen test. Right? They don't understand what a hell a pen test is. Right? So you can go in there and sell bunnies, and you can go over there and sell uh, tigers, and you know, they, they think they're getting the same thing. Right? Season customers, these are only three, three examples of different customer types up there. But just remember that the conversations you have with the customer is different depending on what type of customer it is. Right? You have to be able to read that. We all hear about social engineering, right? Yeah? Maybe. Hopefully, social engineering the customer. Find out what they really want. Find out how they'll talk to them the best, and then have that conversation that way. Your conversation, you're going to have three different conversations depending on what kind of customer it is. And there's hundreds of different customers, not just three, obviously, right? Before you get a customer, right, you got to do all your pre-sales activities, right? I, I mentioned position papers. These are things that are written. That again, writing writing reports. Nobody likes to do it. We're all techies. You know, anytime I have to type something, I have to make sure spell check, grammar checks on, give it to my 10-year-old to read, make sure I didn't make, misspell anything, even after the spell check. I don't like writing, okay? But I have to, because I need to, I need to sell it. I need something that gives me a credibility and, a, 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 again, a differentiator, right? Um, when you're looking at differentiators, you look at what your competitors are doing. Look at what are the good pen testing companies that you want to emulate do. And where it makes sense, mimic them. Where it doesn't make sense and where you want to fork off, fork off. You know, they always say that, uh, you know, uh, what's the saying? That, uh, uh, shit. Uh, the copying is a form of flattery or whatever that hell that saying is. 
Um, so if you copy somebody, you know, obviously you can't plagiarize any of their stuff, otherwise you got legal ramifications and all that other kind of crap. But say, hey, this, they do this, this is good, this is common, you know, 10 people out of 10 do this, I, want, I need to do this. Wait, nobody else does this stuff over here, right? Nobody does X, Y, and Z, so I want to go out and do X, Y, and Z. One of the good things that I like to do before I even get a customer, before I do anything, is customize to my tool sets, right? So make sure that I know what I'm running um, and customize them so that if you run the same tool, you're getting a different results than I'm getting. Whether I'm taking the output and I'm changing the output significantly in my reports or if I'm changing the tool itself to act differently from the tool that's out on, let's say, open source. Sales activity. You need, you need some kind of sales force, right? I don't pick up the phone and say, hey, you need a pen test. Hey, you need a pen test. Hey, you need a pen test. You got to pay somebody to do that, right? You have to get a sales and marketing type firm or person or friend to do that for you, right? One of the things you have to think of when you're selling pen testing work, does it preclude you from doing something else? If I do your pen test, I can't do your remediation. Do I care? If I'm not in the remediation business, I don't care. If I'm solely pen testing, that's fine with me. If I'm in the remediation business, and this is a $50,000 job, and this is a $500,000 job, I'm not doing the pen test. I hope you like $500,000 more than $50,000. I don't know. Maybe. There, if you are just solely doing pen testing, fine. You do your pen test. You get the fifty grand, right? Um, some of the frameworks that I listed, they do get into some of the, the ways that you want to um, the price these out. You have fixed price, you have uh, times and, time and materials. So how do you want to price out the engagement? Is this a flat fee for 25 grand it doesn't care how long it takes? Is this $100 an hour for however many hours I burn, right? And one thing that you have to keep in mind is do you, you want to give the client what they are, they are asking for, right? I mentioned the stupid clients. And sometimes they ask for stupid stuff. You may not ever want to give them that stupid stuff because you don't want to be associated with the, the company that gave and did stupid stuff for clients, right? You may give them the stupid stuff just so you can get to the good stuff and you can drive them and guide them to where they really should have been going in the first place. Um, great. You sold some work. Now what do you do, right? Um, you have to know the differences between the checklist. I'm doing this because I was told to do this by an auditor and I need a checkbox, right? Full balls of wall pen tests. There are differences. This factors into how you're pricing it out because the level of effort that you have to perform are different for each of these types of tests, right? What else are you going to do? Are you going to do non-technical things? Are you going to do social engineering? Are you going to do physical security? What else what is going to do? The industry that the corporation or the customer works in the better you know that, the better off you're going to be, right? I mentioned healthcare. If you know HIPAA and you know high, uh, high trust and all that kind of stuff, uh, high tech, um, then you can go after them and you know where they're check, why they're asking for check boxes when they ask for check boxes. You know why they're doing certain things because you understand the regulations that, are, that drive them, right? Um, when, you, when you do work, use one of the methodologies that I mentioned create your own methodology, whatever, it doesn't matter as long as you follow a formal methodology. This is so that when you go into an organization and you start your pen test, two weeks later something breaks, well you can say, well in my methodology, right, I'm not even there yet, I'm not even testing yet. It gets into logging as well. I haven't touched that box. That box going down has nothing to do with me. Um, being a pen tester, I've been blamed for things that when my laptop is still in my bag. The server went down. Tough shit. I didn't do it. Of course, you're dealing with a customer, so you don't say anything. You can be a political wreck. So you log everything. And you secure communications. Everything you send out to them is encrypted. Everything that you, they send back, you encourage them to encrypt it. But it's kind of like a doctor, right? When the doctor sends you stuff, they have to secure it. When you send doctor stuff, you don't have to. You encourage your client to encrypt to you. If they don't, it's your fault, not yours, right? So 
we got reports. We're going to go through good reports, bad reports, and everything because that I think that's a big differentiator on how you can make it in your business, right? What you want to do after the engagement is to tie all that stuff that you just learned on that engagement back into your sales and your marketing and your and your differentiation, right? Are there common issues that you found? Was there, was there a problem with your methodology and your and your um, methodologies that you used? And your tools you use, if you hit a roadblock there, that's something you can fix, right? Um, was an engagement profitable? Did you give them a fixed price bid of 25 grand and you wound up spending 50 grand worth of stuff? Well, you may not want to price it that way next time. Um, tie everything you can back into pre sales, right? So if you do work in healthcare and you say, hey, everybody that has this, you know, um, presenter box or whatever, it, it has a vulnerability in it. The senior has a vulnerability in it. So every time I see that, I know that they're their own, right? Write a right paper on it. Hospitals are very big this way because hospitals can't change their technologies at a whim. They can't update. Um, they have to get, you know, a lot of things have to be FDA approved and all this kind of stuff to be in healthcare, right? Reporting. Uh, reports are the last thing your customer will see as a pen tester. So when you're, they paid you and you're long gone and they're reading your report, that's the last thing they have to remember you by. So make them good, right? Um, obviously, we, we like to label things high, medium, lows, and all this kind of stuff. But really, what does that all mean? It means different things to different people, right? So reports. I'm going ugly, good, ugly, bad, and good, kind of um, in order of crappiness. I guess, or order of goodness. So the first one is the crappy one. Um, if I can run a tool and get the same report you do, I shouldn't pay you ever. Right? If I get a 300 page report that I can't digest, I shouldn't pay you as a customer. A lot of people like putting all that info informational type findings and stuff like that into a report. As a consumer of those reports, I don't care necessarily. I want to go after the big boxes, right? Fix those first so that I can later have time to work on the small stuff. The bad. The bad reports, they're kind of, this is getting halfway decent, right? So we're not just doing a tool output. We're not just giving them a whole big list of stuff. Now we're doing some, some analysis on the reports, right? Um, this is going to have some graphs, some pretty graphs in there. This is a pretty graph, whether you can recognize it or not. Um, so the graphs are going to be, uh, they're, they're important. They're very important when you go up the chain. The higher the up the chain you go, um, the more graphs make a difference, right? You're summarizing it based on maybe a vertical, comparing this other healthcare type entities. The good, um, this is, I put dollar signs up on all these because the more you work you do into a report, the more the reports are going to cost you. So if you're doing good reports, make sure you charge accordingly. So this is, you know, you're taking your vulnerability ranking and complexity. You're compensating your controls, your app system ranking, right? A critical vulnerability on a critical box is a lot more important than a critical vulnerability on a low box. Yes? Right? Everybody should be shaking their head. Yes? Good. Right? I would say that a medium on a high box may be more than a critical on a low box. Right? But if I'm looking at my tool output and I see critical high, medium, and lows from Nessus or from whatever, they're not taking into consideration what the app or system's ranking is. You have to melt that in. Remediation effort too. How hard will it be? A good report will tell you that it's not your patch management process that's broken. And that's why you, you failed on this uh, vulnerability assessment or this pen test. It's that when you patch things on Fridays, it was broken versus patching things on Wednesdays. Wednesdays you had a 100% success rate. Fridays you had a 50% success rate. So on Fridays when you patch, don't. Patch everything on Wednesdays. Everybody wants to go home on a Friday anyway, right? Um, the good is very customized to the person and to the client themselves, right? You have different things for different levels of personnel. You have the executive briefings prepared. You have the manager level briefings prepared. You have the techie briefings prepared. This is what you've got to do on this box, right? The executive doesn't ever need to see that. The executive is getting like a scorecard, A, B, C, D, whatever. Techies are going to get what to do with all that boxes. So let's go on. Um, you know, okay, I'm getting in. I got to act like a business, different models of follow, all this kind of stuff. So how the hell do you differentiate yourself, right? Um, 
I like Waldo. Like, Son loves that stuff. If you can find it like that, I'm like, what the hell? I don't even see it. Um, all I see is red and white, red and white. Uh, so, um, if you want to differentiate yourself, some keys to differentiate yourself is having a, a, a niche specialty, right? I do pen testing for hospitals. I do pen, pen testing for healthcare payers, right? I, you know, as DerbyCon and, you know, all the people associated with this, I write my own tools that the community uses, right? That's a niche specialty, right? Um, tie it into other things you do, right? I also like talking to the employees when I'm doing a pen test. I can go in there and run my tools and blah, 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 bang away at them from a technical sense. Take out the system admin to dinner. Tell them that you're taking the system admin out to dinner so the system admin doesn't get in trouble for you telling you all the secrets. And say, look, if you were to fix 10 things here, what would those 10 things be? Right? Um, I also like to think, why one, run, run one tool when you can run more than one tool? Right? If a pen tester says, I, I run Nessus, another pen tester says, I run Nexpost, another pen tester says, I run Sing, I come to you and say, I run all of them for the same price. That's a differentiator. All I have to do is set up these boxes, right? That will also help me do my comparisons for false positives and stuff like that. Um, Hire from within. If you're at a hospital, 1099 a nurse to work for you, right? Because they're going to know all the tricks of the trade, right? They're going to know, if, especially if it's a physical um, um, pen test where you're trying to walk around the floor, grab the baby from the, the nursery and run out. Um, I wish my parents would have, I wish I would have been stolen from my parents, but that's a different story, a different talk for a different day. Um, so they're going to know how to get in. They're going to know how the, the lingo to talk to the doctors. I'm going to be like, yeah, I can write, write sloppy. Does that mean it's a prescription? You know, I, I can't really play off as a doctor. So hire within, right? Uh, become their trusted partner. Try to be uh, pen testing. We, we get a lot of knowledge on a lot of bad stuff, right? Um, you don't want to be the person to say, look, you're all jacked up. Ha, 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 right? You want to be the person that says, you're all jacked up, but that's okay because everybody else in your industry is just as jacked up as you are, and working with me, we can get you unjacked up. Unjacked up? I guess that's the term. It is now. All right. Um, your reports, again, it's the last thing you leave them. The better they are, the better the memory is. A year goes by, they need to do another pen test, they're going to go back to the last report, and they're going to say, oh, that was amazing. I'm going to call these guys again. Right, um, so businesses. I also am just going to show off. I got a couple minutes. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know where I'm supposed to end. I'm going to show off my version of the pen testing framework, which I'm releasing, um, which is basically taking some of the ones that I mentioned before in the slides, and um, putting them together in one bigger, better one, bigger, better, faster, whatever you want to call it. Um, so here's mine. So. We start off with the pen testing framework. I'm going to release this after uh, probably Monday when I get back. We have live CDs. We can go through all the live CDs in case and they have all the mappings for all, everything that's going on to backtrack, whatever, right? Um, we have the, the pen testing frameworks from within the talk, you know, what you would do from enumeration, exploitation, everything background. And I also have the business tie-in, business one-on-one tie-in, what you're doing with the business plan. What type of LLC, or what type of company you want to be? Do you want to be an LLC? Do you want to be S Corp? What do you want to be? And I think that kind of stuff is important as well because tax um, purposes. Questions? I'm done, so people can buy me beer. <laughs> Thanks.